years, got somebody to lean on. Coldplay, don't panic. Oh. That's the title of the song as well as what I was saying. <laughs> In fact, I was just saying the title of the song, yeah. if I'm being honest, making it sound like it was Conversation yeah. XFM 104.9. Uh, it's a Ricky Gervais show. With Steve Merchant. Thanks. Um, you were going to tell us a little story about just a Volvo Just passed estate. my test. Yeah. My parents had a big, big Volvo estate, and it's quite a big oh, car to drive. drive. My parents didn't have a car. <laughs> but if you, I know you don't drive cars, Rick, no. but it's quite a big car to drive if you've just passed your test. It's safe though, isn't it? It that is very safe, that was the thing. Yeah. And uh, I live, come from uh, the West Country, obviously, there's quite a lot of windy yeah, lanes. No, there. you're joking, <laughs> do you? They have cars there. <laughs> well, here he comes. <laughs> Blimey, Carl. Learn on a tractor, automatic it was. Do you want me to tell it or not? Oh! <laughs> Oh no, I've got a horizontal. Go on. Oh. Go on. So I went to this party. You never know go at him being from the north. Not when he's telling an anecdote. He's never telling an anecdote. Oh yeah, fair point. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, so I went to a party and I was quite excited because I had the car, I had the motor, and there was a chick heading down to the party that I was like, you know, I had my eye on. And yeah. I thought, you know, now I've got a car and uh, going to the party is going to be amazing, right? <laughs> you and away, various, various friends had said, like, can we get a lift? I thought, yeah, groovy. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, pick yeah, up yeah. the chick as well. He was yeah, a friend yeah, of a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cruising down to the party in the motor, you know, the Volvo estate, and there's nothing sexier than that. You know, slipping a little bit of uh, Billy Joel on the uh, stereo or whatever. Oh, you know, something classic. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and um, or maybe it was uh, Billy Ocean. Oh, I, I, had a, I was quite a Billy. Maybe it was get out of my dreams, get into my car. Ideally, yeah. So I get to the party, and uh, inevitably it was one of those house parties where the, the chick that I had my eye on, uh, she kind of was chatting to other guys, and she wasn't really paying attention to me, and I, and yeah. I was, I was sort of trying not to get was she again. <laughs> oh, oh, same old story. Oh, they make me laugh. They know laugh. how to tease, don't they, they, they the ladies? Oh, who are they kidding? Oh. <laughs> so uh, I'd follow her like a dog, you know, from room to room, yeah. and uh, watch Quite her Quite literally, sometimes he was barking. Yeah. <laughs> and while, uh, you know, just watch her while she talked to other blokes. <laughs> and then, uh, obviously I wasn't, because I, I was driving, I wasn't drinking, so I was not really enjoying myself. And then somebody said, should we go and pick up Vera? And I thought, right, okay, and they went, Steve's got a car, let's all leap in there, we'll go pick up Vera. Mm. And this girl was like up for it as well, so I thought, brilliant, you know, I'll be back in the car with her, you know, away yeah, from yeah, all these, uh, yeah, these yeah, lads. Yeah, yeah. One guy she had her eye on, he came as well, I was a little bit annoyed. Yeah. But anyway, he was in the car, so I'm driving down these country lanes, just driving along, and they're directing me, they're saying, go left here, go right. And then suddenly, we stop, and um, he goes, one of them goes, uh, just drive into that field, this pitch black field, right? And I'm sort of, well, it is my parents' car. Just yeah. drive in the field, Steve. I'm thinking, well, I don't want to, like, not seem like I'm a hard, cool, crazy kind of guy, because the chick's in the car. So I drove the car into the field, they all leapt out, started running off into the darkness, shouting, Vera, 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 where are you? So I'm just sort of sat there in the car, waiting. Wasn't know. Vera Lynn, was it? Because she likes to hide in fields. <laughs> Bizarrely, it wasn't. Right. It was just, I was just left in the car uh, on my own with uh, Billy Ocean, and uh, suddenly, out of the darkness, they come back holding a Vietnamese pot-bellied pig that they had stole from a, no a, a nearby farm, stole and they knew, that, they knew that the pig uh, was called Vera, because someone knew the farmer or something. Anyway, so they got this pig, so now they're going, I'll oh, put the pig in the back of the car, we'll take it back to the party, it'll be hilarious. I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm not sure I want a pig and all its, you know, piggy crap in the car, right, crammed in there, but they say, yeah, so obviously I'm thinking again, I don't want to look like I'm, you know, a nerd. You know, I'm terrified of that, Rick, ever happened. Yeah, yeah. So, um... Yeah. So, uh... So you go, hey, look, bring the pig into the car. <laughs> exactly. I'm exactly. no nerd. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, go on. Um, so now we drive off again. I've got this pig kind of screeching in the back of the car. And, uh, they say, stop again, stop again, let's do some cow tipping. And they do that old thing, you know, about the fact because cows sleep standing up, don't they? So you, you can push a cow over and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so they're having a wild time, hilarious. So this time, uh, now we get to a sort of dead end in the, in the road. And, uh, they say, well, turn around, let's go back to the party. And I'm thinking, fine. Try and do a three point turn in this very narrow country lane, right? Get the Volvo estate wedged horizontally across the road. Can't get it out, just can't seem to sort it out. I don't know what, I'm just, I'm now I'm panicking because there's a pig in the car. Right? And, uh, local disgruntled farmers, right? People drunk, partying, probably off their head on some kind of weed, really. Well, was it loads of blokes with, like, pitchforks and flaming torches <laughs> exactly. going, burn him. <laughs> He's playing with our pig. Exactly that. And, uh, and so that, do you know, I was so terrified that my, well, all I could think was they're gonna have to send a helicopter yeah. to lower a magnet onto the top of the car to lift the car up and put it the right way around. You used to re read a lot of comics, didn't you? Yeah. 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 So, uh, do you know what I started doing? What? Crying. Did you really? Yeah. Why? So started crying, just very slightly, started getting upset, and the, 
the other guy that the girl fancied, he had to get into the driving seat and sort it out for me by oh, slowly no. edging forward so and backwards. that's the worst bit of the whole story. Yeah, edging slowly back and forwards. He just sorted it out. He just slowly, 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 slowly worked the car back round and then we were off. You were just gently weeping. Just gently weeping in the, the back. the bloke had just taken the bird that you saw from a distance. <laughs> exactly. That was basically your wife in your head by then. <laughs> oh, yes. Wasn't it? I can't we believe it. We were happily it. married with a pig for a child. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. joke, that could happen. I know. Um, Do, um, the pigs come, if you like. Sorry? <laughs> what? what did you say? What did you say? What did you say? When you do what, Carl? What? 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 what did you say? <laughs> No, what did you say? Because I don't want to have to go to the radio authority again. You're what did you say then? <laughs> just remember, just remember, just We remember, are going out live, Carl. Yeah, remember Tom Bins, right? What did you say? <laughs> what I'm saying is, why were they shouting Vera? Because pigs don't come to the name, <laughs> do they? Hey. You I know, don't know the ins and outs of a p of pig, you know, have had to lure a pig into your trap. Can I just tell you some very, very interesting things about pigs? Please do. Right. One, they have, a, everyone knows they have a corkscrew shaped penis, right? Yeah, a corkscrew shaped yeah. penis. Yeah. That's yeah. the tail, isn't it? Two, yeah. they can't look up. They can't put their head back and look up, right? Three, yeah. they can have a 30 minute orgasm. Yeah. Rick, is it only pigs that have got a corkscrew shaped penis? <laughs> no, and landlords. <laughs> okay. Very handy. Right. But we're going to do something that we used to do on our local radio show called Rockbusters. Huh? Sounds a bit like Blockbusters, a television programme that used to be on television where they gave sort of real cryptic clues. Yours aren't cryptic clues, yours are ridiculous. So explain Rockbusters. Um, give out an initial of an artist or a band yeah. uh, knocking about like now or ages ago. And I give a, uh, a cryptic clue. It's not a cryptic clue. Um, Very rarely cryptic. Sometimes uh, it works, sometimes it's nonsense, but... Well, as as we once said, I think it is more, um, accurately described a craptic clue. Yeah. Well... Or, what am I thinking? Well, are you gonna give an example, or will we just do them? The classic example, of course, for me, is, um, a woman, she's an artist, the initials are WH, she was wandering around... Texas. ...in Texas, she fell over, a part of her leg fell in a puddle, wet knee Houston. That is the level. That's what you're working with, people. So he's going to give three of these. The first email that gets them all right. The first email we get, and it's timed, isn't it, email, so we can know, that gets all these clues exactly right, can win, what, a, a signed photo of Carl? Now that is exclusive. There are not very many. I don't think they even exist, do they? There are no signed photos of Carl. So this will be an, a, a collector's item. Right. So, uh, yeah, there's three different ones. When you send it in on email, podcast at com. Just put in the subject thing like rockbusters so I know what I'm looking for. Mm. Right then, so three three different clues for you to work on. Uh, first one. Oh, shouldn't I do a jingle for this? Please. Okay. Oh, that sounds cryptic, no rocking it and... Rockbusters. <laughs> uh, right, first one, the initial, right, is B. The right? initial B, band B, or artist. So, band or an artist beginning with the letter B. Mm-hmm. The cryptic clue, well, I don't want a house that's that far away from the water. I want to be right on top of it. Right? That's the cryptic clue. Well, I, I don't want a house that far away from the water. I want, I want, to, I want to be right on top of it. Right? B, artist or band, who is it? Right? Work on that one. Second one, it's B again. B, letter B for the band or the artist. All right. Cryptic clue, right? That part of my leg is English. Right? That's it, is it? Yeah. Right. That part of my leg is English. Initial B. What is it? Part of my leg is English. And then the last one, uh, KW, artist of band, and the cryptic clue, the fitness teacher has got a speech impediment. What's going on there? Right, KW, the fitness, in the fitness teacher, has got a speech impediment. Work on them, right? Send in the answers, podcast at rickgervais.com and uh, just win some st sign picture and that. Right, so last week's uh, clues, there was three of them. Uh, I'll give you an initial of an artist or a band yeah. and a cryptic clue. Yeah. Uh, you work it out, you email it in, you win a signed picture and that. Yeah. Right. Um, first one was, uh, well, I don't want a house that, that far away from the water. I want to be right on top of it. Go on. Right, so that was B. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, that, that was Beyonce. Be Beyonce. 
Like, yeah. It's like a cryptic thing. Do you got that? Mm. Second one. I'd stand. Um, Beyonce. Beyonce. That Beyonce. part of my leg is English. Uh, the initial was B. That was Britney. Right? Britney. Yeah, so it's like British. Britney. But so you only take, you're just taking the one half of her name, are you now? Well, she's known as that now. Mm. I think she's known I don't more know who as she more is, as, but fine. More as Britney than okay. Britney Spears. They don't really call her that anymore. Mm, yeah. Also, British isn't the same as English. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I realised that, but it was too late. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Brilliant. That's what you're up against. Just like that, Ollie wants to be millionaire. The last yeah. one was uh, the initials were KW. Yeah. And the clue was uh, the fitness teacher has got a speech impediment, right? So you've got to sort of think about that. You've got yeah. to think about a fitness teacher. Yeah. He's working out and that, yeah. but he's got a speech impediment. So yeah, when yeah. it when it like comes to like, well, no, you didn't you didn't say all this in the clues. So. But no, but, well, but no. it was it was just that that one was Can Kanye West, right? Kanye so, West. So I'm just saying. Why like, would you the know, fitness teacher say Kanye West? Because he's got a speech impediment and he's been he's been working him out. They built up a sweat and he's like, right. Well, no, you didn't say all that. So it doesn't matter. You but anyway, but, but even even if that is the case, so what is he saying? He's, that's he's a, saying, all right, can we can we rest now? As in, can we rest now? Yeah, just kind of because they say that at the end. It's like, right, everybody. So he's got a speech impediment. He's very very camp and he's adding words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but apart from that, it works perfectly. <laughs> so that is um, bollocks. You're an idiot. So that was uh, the first three. Who and, won? Uh... David Bowie. That is best there. Yeah. Young Americans, can you hear me? You, you said it when the record was on, Steve. You're not going to hear this sort of eclectic mix of music anywhere. Anywhere else, Rick? We go from hip hop to soul. To hip hop and soul, to solely type hip hop, and then some solely hip hop, 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 hip. and ash. And the joy of it is, Rick, that if people are open-minded enough and broad-minded enough, as yeah. I hope our listeners are, yeah. they're going to be loving this. And we played, we played early out and last We've week. We didn't care, Ty. We don't care what he's done since no. or what he's like now. We're not if interested someone, in reputation. I don't judge. I don't judge. You know what I mean? If they Rick, do a good track, can then I say this let's now? play that track. I am not interested in what people thinks cool. No, obviously. No, I'm interested in what people think is good, Rick. Yeah. yeah All yeah. right? No, I'm interested in what we think is good, I Steve. don't care about what women think is traditionally handsome. No! no. I play by my own rules. Yeah, exactly. You do, don't you? Yes. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. You're not in it for their amusement. I'm not in this game for anyone's amusement. No. Obviously all right. not. Jeez, now, all these women with the, oh, you know, I want to be able to have a conversation. Yeah. I want to be able to have, have an orgasm. Exactly. <laughs> you Hello. Know what I mean? Yeah. A live POD or pod. <laughs> Absolutely. As I, as I call them. Yep. On XFM 104.9. A bit of rock. Who are you? I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Carl over there. Now listen, there's a bit of rock there. Yep. Takes us into a competition. We've okay. got Incubus tickets to give Incubus, away. Incubus, you say? Now, I like Incubus. Okay. I mean, for for what they are, I was, you know, I'm a bit worried about all this crossover, this new metal, and these people coming out that are a bit like Pearl Jam, and a bit, all oh, this sort of, oh, I'm, I'm not too sure about it. I'm okay. not still not convinced, but Incubus have got a bit of style about them. Uh, well, you know the um, the competition we just ran there, the phone in, ask Kyle and thing. People were phoning up. One person said, "What do you think about new metal?" Kyle just quick as fast went, "I hate it." <laughs> exactly. And he threw a question right back at them. Went, "Do you listen to that in the morning?" She went, "Yeah." He went, "Wow." You see, in the morning I like Ash. In the evening, I might listen to. Um, I think he said Magic. Magic FM. Yeah. yeah, but I love the fact that he is now. We've we've. Put him on a pedal. He's, he's he's happy with his own opinions. Before he was like, mm, I don't know, and now he wants to tell the world. He'd be down Hyde Park Corner tomorrow, won't he? And they're going right. Who wants to know what I think about? I don't know. Uh... At two o'clock, I will listen to the Human League. <laughs> At Today at 4:13, I had one apple and <laughs> listened <laughs> to Primal Scream. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, oh, no, you're, you're great, bloke, Carl. We better stop now because, you yeah. know, we're going to make you into the new job. There'll, be, there'll be more from Carl next. Well, this is a very last question that someone, this is Jim, he's emailed in. He says, does Carl think that the wa that Waterworld, Mad Max, Judge Dredd or similar films present an accurate portrayal of what a post-apocalyptic world <laughs> might be like? <laughs> How do you imagine what the world will be, Carl, when the, the bomb is dropped? I have got no comment. 
You've okay. got no comment? Okay, let's, let's forget the films. What do you think the world might be like if there was, say, a nuclear war and we had to survive underground for a while till all the, um, you know, uh, uh, waste went away and we could come up and we could eat fruit again and, oh, there was, oh, it was all weird and we had to start from scratch? I'd rather die. <laughs> okay. Okay. Or right. you. Uh? Wouldn't you? Well, supposing it was sort of like, you know, Britain was just like, it was, all the buildings had gone, right? Or there was some, some bit of scavenging, there was like, and we hid underground and we came out, you know, sort of, in ten years' time. Don't keep shaking your head, you know, the question. You can go, no, 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 <laughs> rather die. <laughs> and it's fine, you lived on tin fruit for a few years, right? Then you had to come up and start again. You had to, and you had to find other civilizations. I'd want that thing that, um, is it, is it Walt Disney had? Sort of. Cryogenically put me in a, put me in a fridge thing and say, look, wake me up when it's all built again. Mm. I can't be doing with that, walking around yeah. with a hard hat on all day. Yeah, what would you do? Set an alarm clock? You're, you're <laughs> the only person, what well, you get in a fridge and leave a note, if you find this, do not disturb till 2012. <laughs> you know what I mean. No, I, well, yeah, but so that wasn't, well, I mean, what would you do first? You'd just come out, right, come out into the light, it was just like, it was like, you know, um, S Saxon Britain, there was nothing, you'd have to start again, what would you do? What would you do first? I'd probably go and see where I live now to see what's left of it. <laughs> I love how he thinks. <laughs> oh, Carl, if you if you were the last man on earth, right, yeah. and you had to have one other woman with which to start the human race again, right, yeah. and not your girlfriend, who would you start the human race again with? Which person would you oh. would you want to? Bear in mind, it's not just like the fact that you've got to have kids. You've got to they've got to be able to provide something in this and they, world. And they've they got to be might, leaders, and they might be all melted. And they, they, <laughs> exactly. So and their beauty may have. They've just got one good eye, uh, but now they can tell what you're thinking because <laughs> exactly. of radiation. <laughs> yeah. They, and and you think, and. Carl? They tried to go through a pod, and there was a there was a fish in there for some reason in their Wellington. Ooh. I mean, for me, probably. And what would you rather kiss, a mermaid or a unicorn? <laughs> Carl, quickly. Mermaid. Why? No, sh 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 no, 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 I want him to answer my question. He's got a lady's face. Mm. Okay, then. What would you rather kiss, a lady with um, the body of a fish or the body of a horse? A fish. Aren't you? <laughs> This is the best thing in the world. It's just like, you know when you call a file a rude word, <laughs> yeah. and then the computer goes, do you want to open tits? <laughs> yeah. You laugh, because it's like, that's what playing with Carl's sure. like. It's sort of like you input it, and it, you always get, you get, you know what I mean? You yeah. sort of get... You get more back than you bargain for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. Probably only because, though, because I've seen films, that, that one with that Hannah Darrell or whatever her name is in, and she looks yeah. all right. I've never seen Hannah a film Darryl, yeah. with a woman with a horse's body. Maybe if I've seen one, I'd... I'd might change my mind. If okay, can, right. can you email us a picture of a woman with a horse's body? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky Dodger Vase at XFM. Or do they anything. do they exist? Anyway, do you reckon unicorns exist, Carl? No. no. Look, let's play another song then, because I think we were going to give away some incubus tickets. We seem to have got sidetracked. Okay. Um, we? Well, I'd like to play my song for the lovers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not ashamed of this. It's an early Bowie track. It's his his sort of you know version of soul. It's off the Young Americans album, and it's a beautiful song called Can You Hear Me? Ash, there's a star on XFM 104.9. Now, Steve. Yes. Carl text messaged me in the week, very excited, because he just watched a programme that proved me and you were stupid. Remember when we, we um... We sort of champion the anti-supernatural. Yes, we, sceptical view. We're, we're just absolutely sceptical. Anything like that. Um, um, we're we're atheists. We don't believe in ghosts. Anything like that. Anything supernatural. We're we're very we're we're followers of James Randi, a, a genius of our times. But Carl saw something that proved us wrong. I'd like Carl to tell you what this proof was. What he saw on, and uh, look at him. Go on then. It was tell on. Us. It was on Wednesday night. Yeah. I was watching. I, you see, the problem is I didn't get the full story, so you could pick holes out of it. Sure, 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 sure. And, and like your usual investigations <laughs> into the supernatural, <laughs> which are it was called. Can I just say what the program's called? Mister Exorcist. <laughs> oh, brilliant! <laughs> so sounds bit, like an academic work to me. Yes. The bit that I caught, I, I just flicked it over, I, I, sort of seeing what's on the telly, and I thought, oh, Exorcist, I've seen it, but there's nothing else, and I watch it, and then I realised it wasn't the same thing. Yeah. Thought, oh, I love a bit of this, and um, there was an old woman. And, and a daughter, and as far as I was aware, the, the bit I picked up on, they were saying, oh, you know, it's it's dreadful, and, unless you've been through it, you know, you've had ghosts in your house and that, you really don't know what it's like. Yeah, sure. And the main thing that seemed to be getting them down was the fact that the budgie was getting stressed. 
The budgie was getting stressed. Because animals can sense the, the other side, can't oh, okay. they? Can they? Yeah. Okay. So, um... And how was that manifesting itself? You don't know. What was the budgie doing? I think it, it, it just wasn't happy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> did it? Did it? Did it explain that to people, or no, how did know, it express I mean, that? Bud budgies are known for being chirpy, aren't they? I see. And it wasn't chirpy. It, it, well, it, you know, it normally swings on its little perch and that. And it's just depressed because it was right. possessed. It was just yeah. sat around in its uh, in its pajamas. <laughs> so, <sorry. laughs> no, no, yeah. no. Come on, so Steve. Then, Come on, Steve. You're making this a mockery. So <laughs> the budgie was depressed because he could sense the ghost. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then, so yeah. this yeah. Um, yeah. this guy, yeah. this Mister uh, Exorcist, came yeah. round. Was that his name? Yeah. Okay. Was he was he a priest or something? Yeah, he might have been. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I did he, did he have a, did he have a, like a black coat with a little white collar? He, that's that's usually the. He had his coat on, so you couldn't tell. No, sure. Okay. But so he, he came round and he sort of did his thing, yeah. and um and then and was, the he next shot, was he trying was he trying was he trying to exorcise the budgie? Uh, no, no, the, the, the ghost. House. Right, the house, so it yeah. wasn't that the budgie had a demon or anything. No, okay. No, this wasn't a possession, was it? This was a straightforward. It wasn't a poltergeist or anything. It was just a. Well, it's a haunted house. Yeah, yeah but sure. th that's the thing he was saying. He was saying you can have like your ghouls and that that aren't that bad. That aren't going to cause you any yeah. problems. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, obviously yeah. the the budgie they've got, they've got weak hearts and that, haven't they? <laughs> and <laughs> sure. I so so he go on. So so, so, so anyway, basically he sorted it out, did whatever he did, and uh, the next shot you see is like the budgie making a noise and swinging it's it out, over the moon again, and the the old woman was like happy because she was she couldn't believe it. Yeah. And that does the priest didn't come in and go well. You should feed that bird. <laughs> Give it a bit of millet. It, it was happy. It goes right. No, See you later. No, it was a. Toast. Budge, I mean, budgies are. Um, my mum's got a budgie, and they, they, you know, they're fairly happy all the time, aren't they? So it's got to be something fairly yeah. odd. Right. You never see a budgie sitting down going. I feel like topping myself, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Though? No. Do you know no. you can have like moody, a uh, moody dog. You can you can see a dog when it's unhappy if it's walking yeah. down the street. You can have a moody canary, can't you? And what they do is they often tell the police what you've been doing. They're known for that. Mm. Yeah. So, so um, basically, so that for you is proof that the supernatural exists. A bird in a cage got a little bit annoyed. <laughs> wasn't chirping as much as it normally did. Who knows why? There could have been a little draft up its. <laughs> You know, and uh, oh, like <laughs> exactly. That's anyway, a medical term. Anyway, a man just... came in and did whatever he did. Yeah. Yeah. Your Mr. Exorcist, though, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> was, <laughs> it, this wasn't any bloke off the street. This was Mr. Exorcist. Yeah, yeah. So and for you, that's the proof that there is. Um... Just because, like, if it was a, a person, you go, oh, they're they playing up for the camera. Yeah, you know, a they... budgie could possibly act like that, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. You say you're saying a budgie would not be trying to. It wouldn't be trying to become famous. No, or no not like telly. not like Lassie. No, sure. It was sure. basically a show off. Yeah, or so, champion the Wonder Horse. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I think... I've changed, well, I've changed my tune, Rick, I don't uh, know about you. I have, and I think we should play a record. I'd love to get Mr. Exorcist in. Wouldn't that be amazing? Never dabble with things you don't understand. Sorry. Like women. See what I did there? <laughs> He's turned that back on me. Learn. Boys and girls. Girls and boys. Embarrassed to say. Um, now, that was, uh, David Bowie there. Uh, we've, uh, we've, we've played some great tracks here. But we've got more to come, haven't we? We have indeed, yes. Plenty more to come, Rick. But we're going to give those Incubus tickets we've away. We've got our competition. Now, we were talking about um, people keeping open mind. Now, our listeners have got open minds. They're, yeah. they're, they're like, they're not only open, they're blank. Yeah. They're, you know what I mean, yeah. really? Empty canvases. From the Empty ones that have been, yeah, <laughs> yeah. From the ones that have been phoning up, I yeah. don't know how are they dialed. No. I think they're wrong numbers or they sat on the phone or something. Sure. Um, and a lot of old listeners are coming back. A lot we've, of people from the old days of XM. Yeah. I don't know, they've obviously been allowed out. Yeah. Uh, well, that's care in the community, Rick. Yeah. You know, a lot of people yeah. now get thrown out of those homes so or I thought, detox centres. Yeah, I thought maybe an old question, something I'd uh, explored three years ago, what four years ago. What excites me is the fact that, you know, clearly all those kind of needle exchanges mm -hmm. and things like that really helping people stay alive, and that's sure. a joy. Sure, sure, you know, that's, sure. that's evidence so, there on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what about this? Now, you know the answer to this. I've done this before. Okay. Right? There is one London station. Rick, we've done this in the last couple of weeks. Oh, you think I'm going to say St John's Wood? Yes. No. Okay. There is one London station that has no vowels. That has no vowels? No, it's not. <laughs> oh, no. You've not thought this no, through at all. It's one vowel. It's one vowel. It is one vowel. So there's, there's one London station with one vowel? I can't remember the answer, though. <laughs> oh, no, this is pathetic. <laughs> This is so rubbish. <laughs> I so want to be on someone else's show. Like Camfield would be good, or just on like Dr. Fox. <laughs> we like Dr. Fox now, Dr. don't Fox we? Dr. Fox is amazing. We like him. I, I, he's, he's come through on that pop star, pop stars tonight. 
I love Foxy. I like, I like his little trunk. He's like, a, he's like a little trunk. And he works out and he's got a bike and everything, but I like him. He's got, he's optimistic. He wears too much blusher and he's, I like his suits. But it's I, the fact that he's, it's like, however hard he tries, he just doesn't look right on the telly. He just I looks know, like a man who's been sewn into that suit. I know, I know. So I tell you when I saw him once riding here into Capital, uh, on his hog, on his Harley. Oh, is that? It's such a yeah. joy. Yeah. He's, uh, no, we like Foxy. What about Simon Cowell? Oh. What about that Nicky Chapman? Like her. Yeah, what about the other, who's the other one? Oh, Waterman. Waterman. Up and down He's Waterman. a bit of a knob. Wow, come on, you can say that, but he's, no, he he's, 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 he's sold millions of records. None of this talking- So is our price. None what? of this talking is disguising the fact that we still not managed to give those incubators okay, away. Okay, 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 what Any about other this? What about this? What about this? You've got nothing, have you? No. You're running on empty. Yeah. Play a record. <laughs> Hives there on XFM 104.9. Right, we've got a competition question. Steve's come up with it at the last minute. This is just to check if you are a regular listener of the show. Yeah, okay. we would like to reward loyalty. Exactly, absolutely. So, um, last week on the show, Ricky described a story that happened to him uh, back in the 80s when he was making his TV appearance on Razzmatazz with his band. And he tried to, he had to fly out, was it to Newcastle? Yeah. And um, he tried to get on a plane, and a pop act of the 80s tried to help Ricky sneak aboard an aeroplane. But failed. But they failed to do it. At the height of their powers. And they were at the height of their powers. What was the name of that outfit? Should we put them on the line? Absolutely, let's hear well, it. There's, there's the people there already. This is to win Incubus tickets. Please do not be mental. Don't be mental or swear or say anything libelous or nasty. Yeah. Just be nice. You won't, you won't win if you're not. Go on. Hello? Hello? Hi, who's that? Oh, I've got my headphones on, haven't I? Put your headphones on, Rick. I'll just oh. keep her talking. Oh, no. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Okay, hello. Hi. Hello there. What's your name? Lindsay. Lindsay, where are you calling from? Um, Clapham Junction. And do you know the answer? I do. Okay. Is it Bucks Fizz? It was indeed Bucks Fizz. It was the Fizz. <laughs> it was indeed the Fizz. Well, do then. you like Incubus? Um, yeah. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, you see, if I was interrogating you, <laughs> I, I, I'd go, you hesitated. Yeah. There's so many people phoning up who are desperate for these Incubus tickets. Please don't make they this are give right them to you. No, no, to be fair, they're rightfully yours. No, right, you... I'll tell you what, why, I'll have a t-shirt if you give them the tickets. Okay, is that just any old t-shirt or... No, no. Can we, uh, can we send you a t-shirt? Carl's nodding. Right, we think we can send you a t-shirt. Right, um, we'll get you a t-shirt. How, how, how are you going to do that then, Carl? Because you've got to take her name and everything now. Uh, you keep talking a minute. Yeah. <laughs> this is pathetic. <laughs> this this is wouldn't happen with Dr. Fox. He'd have it Foxy all Foxy wouldn't do yeah. this. Can I, can I say as well, it's a bank, um, the train station with one vowel. Yeah, but there's loads on there. He hasn't thought it through. No. Bo as well. There's many. Listen, no. Carl, they yeah. can never remember. It can't have been that. I can't remember it. What was it? I remember I tried it the last time I tried this it. This is I mean, a shambles. And I couldn't work out. Then there was, there was wrong answers. I remember Aldwych came up. Maybe right. it's Aldwych. What's, what? What's oh. Carl doing now? Who's he talking to? I don't, he's talking to her, but what? Say again? This, look, quick, let's think of something. Come hey, on. tell her, are you still on this line? No, she's, he's picked up the phone now. So what am I doing? Sh we're giving away, we're, look, we're letting people behind the curtain. Let's keep up this veneer of professionalism. This is so rubbish, Come on, no, 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 no don't, okay. don't draw attention to it. Okay, all right. Uh, but let's just talk and make so, that thing. So, uh, Steve, well, hey. what, what are you doing tonight? Looking forward to pop stars? <gasps> looking forward to a lot. Who, Who do you want to win? I'm glad you've asked, Rick. Um, I'd love to see Darius have a bit of success, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think, uh, it's probably going to be the stutterer. I think it is going to be, um, Gareth. He has a name there, Steve. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be Gareth, yeah, apparently sure, in the sure. polls in the week he's getting twice a bit. We're back, don't we? Okay. Alright, Carl, um, so, right, okay, so she's getting a t-shirt, is she? Lovely. Right, is we, who's, who's that on the line? Next contestant. Hello? <phone rings> this is amazing. <laughs> An error? I, I mean, we couldn't do this worse. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> hello? Hello. Hello, Hi. who's that? It's Dan. Dan, hello, Dan. Danny. All so, right, do you want to go to Incubus? I'd love to, man. Okay. Hold on, this is pointless, because he's just heard the last, uh, he's heard the answer. Yeah, definitely Bucks Fizz. This is mad, we didn't think this through! <laughs> no, but let's be honest, it, he wouldn't have been on the line if he didn't know the answer. Are you cheating? No. Dan. Dan, he said he's not cheating. For, uh, this is failsafe. <laughs> That's failsafe. This <laughs> is our rigorous, I can't <laughs> believe it. Really uh, Dan, you're going to Incubus. Oh, uh, cheers, man. Well That's done. Well done. Oh. Last one. Thanks cheers. for listening. Cheers. Oh. Carl, what do we have to do? Do we just hang up, or what happens? No, you play a song and... Play a song then. You've got oh. his details. Yeah. Oh, play God. it. Just what is it that you want to do? Well, we want to be free. We want to be free to, to do what we want to do.
fever just today. That reminds me of this Christmas where my 51-year-old brother wouldn't let anyone near the PlayStation 2 because he was playing Gran Turismo. And he has to build his car up and buy it. He just played it from about six o'clock till sort of three in the morning. Was really? it bought for him? Or about three. Uh, I, d I don't know, but uh, we, we had to watch him. <laughs> <laughs> Why that song particularly? Uh, Why it's, that on, song? it's on it. Oh, it's it's the, the, I, think, I think Feed a Feature all over it, don't they? On the, right, on the, right, on the right. soundtrack, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. I was on the tube the other day, Rick. So oh. I was just coming into Finsbury, uh, Finchley Road. Yeah. And uh, I was on the train. I, 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 mean, I know you don't travel on the tube anymore. No. It, Famous, but um, I, I never did. No, no, fair it's, it's not that I don't really recognise. It's just that it's beneath me. <laughs> fair enough. And um, <clears throat> and they're on, on the tube in the, each carriage on these newer ones. There are kind of these uh, flaps that are normally locked closed, and there was one of them that's swinging open. And inside there were various buttons like on off, you know, self destruct, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. But serious like doors operating. Train so. quicker. Exactly. <laughs> and you were thinking like you don't want some you know kind of oik. Sort no. of fiddling around, pressing buttons and stuff, it could be quite dangerous. Yeah. So I got off a feature and I thought, I'll, I'll be a good commuter, I'll mention this to the staff, and, and they'll probably, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll thank me for it. And if it's an attractive young staff member, you know, I mean, they never are on the tube. Have you ever seen an attractive member of staff at a tube station? Oh, come on, steady They on. are such freaks. I no, mean, I know that's the pot, kettle they're all, black thing, They're all from Devon, apparently. They're grotesque people, really. All right, steady on. And uh, so anyway, I went up to this guy, I thought... The I'd uniforms go. don't out, though, do they? They don't, it's pretty grim. And so yeah. I went up to this guy, I said to him, excuse me, I was just on the train there, and um, there was a flap open, I could see all these buttons and things. He went, right. I was like, yeah, well, I just think, you know, it might be, you know, you know wandering hands, a small child or something. Yeah. Right. Small yeah. child? He went, he went, what carriage was it? I said, well, I don't really know what carriage it was. I just, maybe you're the next stop, someone should come and check. He went, well, how are they going to check if they know what carriage it's in? <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, I just thought, I just wanted to smack him in the face. I just thought, I, you know, I'm in a hurry. I've got no reason. There's no gain for me about telling this. It's not going to help me out in any way, not financially, nothing. I'm I just going to help you out, and that's your attitude. I was absolutely I know. Livid. I'm getting so intolerant in my I old age. I won't. I can't uh, uh, stand bad, it. bad service, bad attitude, just, uh, oh, it drives me mad. It makes my blood boil, and I, oh. Livid. I was one time, right, I was down in the centre of town. This was after some of the big explosions, the IRA had you know, various things. And everyone was on kind of bomb alert, very nervous, very scared. And uh, there was a, a, a sort of a bag in the street, you know, this was the centre of London or whatever, and, and my friends and I were a bit edgy, but a bit nervous. And we're outside this pub and we saw the bag and we thought, maybe we should sort of tell, we'll tell the landlord from that. So we told the landlord, right, and he, he came out and he looked at it and he thought, oh, you're right, lads, it does look a bit shifty. Um, and this is what he did, this was his security measure, right, <laughs> he was going to call the police, but in the meantime, he picked up one of those sandwich boards that advertises what food's being served in the pub, just placed it over the top of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's fail. So that is please. what the bomb disposal unit use <laughs> exactly. very often. That like, you see them uh, up and down Oxford Street. They're they're not people, sell, um, you know, selling stuff. Sure, that's just there's they a bomb will leave on a bomb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I love the idea because what we did was we moved about a hundred yards down the road because we thought if the bomb goes off, we want to see it. That'll be dramatic. Yeah, we don't want to get <laughs> yeah. <you> know, injured. <laughs> Yeah. But I love the idea of like a, a sandwich board flying off into the air, and just embedding itself in someone's head. Yeah, well, no yeah. one would have been. Who do I sue? That sandwich board. Well, that was that was Ron, the landlord. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. My God, is that is that is that a Cumberland pie for five ninety five? I can't believe I like. <laughs> John, I think there's something more serious. There's a anyway. I'm... <laughs> Paramedics going. I can't. Not even be a pie. <laughs> it's pretty... I'm going to come back here. <laughs> So anyway, so listen, he calls the police, right, and so after a while, about, you know, it's like 40 minutes later, and I think the police do a good job, I'm not trying to be down on the police, I think it's a, it's a good job, and I, I respect the police, but, um, this, this police van turns up after about 40 minutes of waiting, right, and this, this guy leaps out of the van, and he goes, what, you're the guys who reported this, are you? And we went, yeah, he went, right, and he looked at the bag, and he picked it up, he unzipped it, and there was just some rubbish in there, and he just, and he just looked, he just threw it at us, he went, there's your bomb for you, and threw it at us, to teach us a lesson, and then got in the van and drove off. And it was like, uh, oh what, what lesson are you teaching us about what did being you do? a good citizen? You, you presumably reported him, did you? Well, of course we're not asking at him, you know, it's not... Do you know what I think? I think he thought it was a bomb. Right. And he was trying to blow you up to <laughs> yeah. teach you a lesson. Well, possibly. That's but bad, just, that is just, really bad. It just winds me right up, stuff like Once, that. Once, right, uh, it's, <laughs> but me and Bill, we, we had sort of, it was like 1983, and we had like extensions and um, cut off t-shirts and jeans and uh sexy uh, yeah you know like make it all new it and we were just eating chips on a corner right? and this it was a saturday so i assume it was like um um <laughs> football patrol about 12 police in the car and they sort of slowed down looked at us and he wound the window down and the bloke driving shouted you look like a couple of prats <laughs> Bill turned to me and went, is that an offence? <laughs> and I remember <laughs> wanting to laugh at the joke, but thinking, that's annoying. Yeah, of <laughs> course. <laughs> that is annoying. They were right. 
Well, yeah, they were right. Said. It's not really a police issue, I don't yeah. think. Someone called into uh, HQ that morning. Guys, if you've seen anyone looks a bit, uh, you know, the fashion <laughs> police. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, looks, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've heard a bit. There's a bit of a uh, to do. Apparently, a couple of prats are walking round. Yeah, uh, uh, we need someone to go on fashion police <laughs> patrol. <laughs> Send in Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, but you know we we respect the police. Yeah, we're not. No, I don't, I'm not having to go. It's just those few that give them a no. bad name, really. Yeah, exactly. High hey, five for it. hey, high five. I think the boys in blue do a good job. <laughs> they do, they do, and do the firemen. Yeah, the firemen do especially well. the firemen. I remember once. This is really embarrassing. This is the arrogance of youth, right? In a, in a hall of residence, every time someone did toast. The fire alarms went off. I remember once it was like two in the morning and we all had to go outside and it was just toast set off thing, but it, it was linked. And about eight fire engines turned up and I, I, they were all coming in, right? And I said, oh, this is so embarrassing. Why am I telling this? Go on. I just went, there's enough of you. God. And the fireman right away said, he just went, shut your mouth, mate. Yeah. And I thought... Oh God, he's right. He's when I said you remember ten years later. Yeah, that's a horrible thing. What? A tw I know, but I, I when want you to publicly apologise. Oh, to the I'm, fire so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Because I show, never did oh, stuff like that. Oh, that is twice. I was too busy saying, "Can I try on your helmet?" <laughs> 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 oh dear. Oh, we better play another yeah, song, aren't we? Oh, this is uh, um, a great track. This is uh, Groove Armada. It's from uh, the album Goodbye Country. Hello, nightclub. It's the opening track. It's all called uh, Sun Toucher. I think you'll like this, Steve. Well, I'm looking forward to it. XFM 104.9. Kicking off there with a dandy Warhol, Steve. Sure. The Ricky Gervais Show. With, with me, Steve, Steve Merchant. Well, they always let me say that. Well, oh, I thought you would... What? Well, Five past one, isn't it? Already an error has occurred. Yeah, it's a shame, yeah. It could have been slick. But Steve, we've got some great music. I've been on a bit of a soul tip this week, Are to be honest. Really? Yeah, I was right. a bit of a folky last week, but mm. you know, you got stuff from like uh, you know early, early Bowie, some Stevie Wonder, sure. a little bit of Groove Armada. We've got the, we've got the classics. We've got Coldplay. We've got Blur. We've got Ash. Sure, sure. We haven't planned anything for the show. I got nothing, any, have you? You're no, just, just reading the list of songs, list of songs that thinking I thinking that play. will fill up some time. Oh, mm. no. Anything interesting happen to you over the week? Um. Nope. No, I just swore off air, and yeah. Carl went, never swear in an on-air studio. <laughs> I love it when Carl tries to sound like he, he's professional and understands the business. Yeah. You don't fool us, Carl. Yeah. Hey? Yeah. Oh, oh, I wish I could buy, I wish I could buy, like, a Carl, you know, like, those Garfields you can stick on a car window? Oh, yeah. I reckon they should be, we should be able to get a car like that, that we could send out as a gift to people. That'd be lovely, wouldn't just it? Just this little face, pressed up against the glass, like a window licker. Yeah. Like, you'd have to lick his face to stick it Yeah. There. That'd be a joy. Oh, oh bless, bless him. him. Or one of those things you throw out a window and it sort of like flaps down, you say, they sell them for a quid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or those little dancing little Baby cars. pigeons. That's what we used yeah. to use. Or frogs sure. from the pond. Sure, yeah. It's cruelty to animals and I don't condone that and it was a joke before the RSPCA phone in and say stop throwing frogs at windows. Well, people um, who are listening... Uh, I don't mean the French, by the way. That, is, that sounds like xenophobic before... The, the, someone calls in and says stop throwing French people at windows. Yeah. So I'm digging myself into a yeah. hole here, aren't I? Yeah. It's all gone horribly Quick, wrong. mention the Germans and then this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't mind the Germans. No, good. Um, Carl, uh... I was just saying, I wonder if people know what Carl looks like in the in the wide world. Is there any reason why they should have you ever he's featured sort of, on anything or... He's like Moby, he looks like Moby. He does look like Moby. Yeah, that's what Yeah. Does. does that help? Is that a compliment? A sort of a Moby who's... Mank. Had a bit of a tough paper round when he was younger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. a bit more knackered than Moby. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. See, I, 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 I think Moby's great. He's one of those people, that every opens his mouth, I sort of, oh, I'd love to be mates with him. He talks sense, he's interesting, he's lovely. I don't like his records. Mm. There's nothing I can do about that. If I ever meet, if I ever come top mates with him, and after about a few years of us, like, driving around and having a fight, and go, oh, and I, I'll go, Moby, I've never liked anything you've ever done. Mm. Is I that what you do with your mates, just drive round? <laughs> What are you, 16? Never. <laughs> go, I've never go done that. To, go to a car park and just do handbrakes. Never. Through. I haven't done that since I was like 17 when like it was great to sort of <laughs> someone had a car. You couldn't believe that you were just moving. Yeah. I remember once, right, my mate, um, uh, Bob, had a car and there was me and another friend in it and uh, we were young, we were about sort of 18, and uh, he did a U-turn when he shouldn't and, a, and this um, motorbike hit him and came off and the music was, was, was turning me down. It was really, really bad, right? And he was there and he was really worried and the motorbike bloke was dazed. 
And he went, are you okay, I'm really sorry. And the bloke said, yeah. And I put my head out the window and went, sorry about that, mate. That's the third one today. <laughs> and this man, I just looked at him and he went, no, don't do that, Gervais. Why did you do that? Why did you say that? I just thought it would be funny. I didn't really understand the, uh, yeah, you know, the yeah. severity of this. I think it can all go wrong. Do you know what I mean? Of course it can. So can sitting in your little room moaning about nothing happening in the world. You know, he, he wanted to stop educating Ricky because nothing happened. He said, he said, look what happened last week. I scoured the net. He said, all I found was a dog in a car wash and a parrot and a vicar. Uh -huh. right? I'll tell yeah. you what, there ain't much more going on this week. We are talking, sh listen, me and Steve, yesterday, we took a day off to prove you wrong, and we've come up with two of the most incredible things I told you about, and they're amazing. So there are things out there, or is it just, ju but just go for truth. Go for truth and science yeah, yeah, and discovery. Do, do. Don't, don't, yeah. the, the yeah. fact is, is strange than fiction. You don't have to revert to oh, sort of yeah. like God and ghosts. I know, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But the funny thing is, you know, like, the last couple of weeks I've been saying there's not much going on. Yeah. I found out when I was looking that there was a day in 1930, right, it was right. a good Friday, there was no news. There was nothing going on. They had to put a music video on or something on the telly because there was nothing going on. <laughs> play a record. We're going to play some classic tracks today. This is uh, Debaser. I, I know what you're getting at <coughs> with the uh, with the educating Ricky, but you know. Let's see. Let's see. You've got uh, three titles. Yeah. Uh, that I tease you with different stories. You take your pick, and I teach you something that yeah. did happen. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of venom. Uh, yeah, go on. First one is um, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's bacon related, knowing you. You've got uh, <laughs> you've got enough is anus. Say that again. Enough is an anus. <laughs> <laughs> enough is enough. Well, but it's changed to enough is an anus. <laughs> yeah, and okay. you've got. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've also got. Uh, will it will it be a bloke? Oh, oh no, will it like a bloke or a woman? <laughs> <laughs> what? Will it like a bloke or a woman? Will it? Yeah. <laughs> Will it like a bloke or a woman? Wow. Yeah, so there you, there you three stories. Okay, today. sounds exciting. Okay, stuff. well I'll have Will so, it, Will well, it like- we're gonna play a record now, Rick, surely. Yeah, yeah okay. And, uh, and come back with- Sorry uh, about the crowds and the big baby. Alright. It's available less than room. I'll think of a title for him. Right. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> three stories, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. Looking Enough forward, is a nurse. And, uh, and uh, we'll have that one then. That one. Yeah. Right. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you believe in palm reading and stuff? No. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Yep. Yeah, of yeah, course. Sorry, true. I forgot. Yes, of course we do. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, there's a fella <coughs> who um, he, he used to do palm reading. Oh yeah. But a lot of people, he found that when he went up to him in the street and said, "Do you want your palm reading?" He was like, a lot of them were like, you know, oh, I've. I've you know, I'm a bit ashamed of my nails and stuff because mm. they're a labourer or, or they're a cleaner or mm. something like that. I know a lot of labourers are slightly embarrassed by their nails. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but yeah. So if you look at my bloody hands, Reg, <laughs> well, that's that hod carrying. <laughs> did I ever tell you? That, <laughs> did I ever tell you that I got picked at school to <laughs> make tea and serve biscuits to old people because I've got good nails? <laughs> Is there any more yeah. to the story? Well, that's about it. I mean, it'd be, <laughs> we used to do like, I think the head teacher must have been getting something, maybe getting his mam in there for free or something in the people's home. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so <laughs> he offered the kids <gasps> of the school, uh, he said, right, all, all sit at your desk and put your hands on the table. <laughs> and everyone did. And he walked past me <laughs> and he said, not bad, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, uh, you've got the afternoon off, you can uh, go and serve biscuits and tea to the old, old people. What did you say? I said, all right then. <coughs> was good. that? Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so these- yeah, well, What did well, you do? He just sort of walked around and went, you all right, uh, do you want bourbons or died you? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you'd get on with old people, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd love to see- maybe Especially the senile ones. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! No, but I'd love to see you on VH1, just do a link, and just go, you know, they've just played, uh, um, Robert Palmer, right? And it comes to you in a little park, and you just sit next to an old lady and go, all right? And you go, yeah, not too bad. And you go, what do you think of London? Crap, innit? And she goes, yeah, it's awful, innit? And you just have a talk, and you go, all right, well, she doesn't like it. In excess. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see. Mm. I still think my idea is better. But mm -hmm. so, what are you going for then? Oh, you've picked one, haven't you? <laughs> uh, yeah. So this fella. So there's so there's, there's palmists going around the streets. Yeah, he's going round and yeah, randomly they're trying to give they're losing, palm readings. They're losing money, right. hand over fist. Yeah. All right. So um, they said uh, <laughs> he, he's what he's done. He's he's reading people's 
uh, bottoms now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> whoa, 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 you just, you just, I didn't quite follow that. He was a palm reader, that wasn't making money, so now he's going up to people in the street and saying, can I see your arse? Basically, yeah. So from, from, from being a palmist to an arsonist? Well, uh, they just, that's, that's what he does. He said these same sort of lines and that that you get on your hand, you get them on your, on your bottom, <laughs> and, uh, he can read them. Right. Yeah, he's not a pervert or anything, or making up as he goes along. No, that's, that's it, that was that. So, if, sorry, if a man <laughs> came up to you in the street and said, <laughs> can I have a look at your arse? Can I read your arse? <laughs> you'd, you'd drop your trousers, would you? <laughs> no, no, no. If he went up to him and they said, oh, I'd rather you didn't because I'm a labourer. I've got bad fingernails. No, that's why I've seen- that's what the- a lot of labourers, they're showing their cleavage, you think, but actually they're having their arse right. <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. a lot of- that's what it is. And then, right- So is that the end of the story? <laughs> yeah. But then because- That's it. Educating Ricky is there's a bloke <laughs> who reads arses. <laughs> no, but You're then, a mentalist. But no, but What then, are you talking about? But then, do you know, like, now and again I come up with a little jokey line. Thought yeah. I'd make an effort today for VH1 or MTV. Yeah. yeah. Little line there. Um, <laughs> don't worry, it won't last. It might just be a splash in the pan. Okay. Phil Collins next. <laughs> yes, <laughs> let's play some Phil. <laughs> let's play some Phil. Right, so, uh You we better get that idea. Carl Zane Pilkington. Educating Ricky, will we carry on? Yeah. Right, you've got left. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh yeah. will it like fellas or will it like women? Well, you said wool before. Yeah, wool it. Go on then, I've wool it. Right, now this is similar to the one you were talking about before, right? They found out <laughs> that, um... <laughs> they. <laughs> yeah. Scientists, scientists. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've found out... 17th century? That, um, like now, uh, one in ten rams are gay. One in ten rams are gay? Yeah. Yeah. So that was like, wool it. That's how I could get that in. Um, <laughs> they got a load of gay and straight rams. Right. Right. Um, they worked out which were which first. They said, right, that's, that bunch there is a, is a gay bunch. They looked better, they just had more pride in their appearance. And, uh, and the other ones, you know, the straight ones, and then they gave them to this scientist and said, right, go on, do what you've got to do. And they took the brain out of, of all of them. <laughs> just to check. And, um, they did tests on the brain and it worked out that they've got something smaller in the brain. The gay ones have got something in the brain that makes it smaller. And they said, right, well, that's probably how it's gonna work on, on males. On, on like, males and females and, like, humans. So you took from this that gays have smaller brains than straight people? No, there's something in the brain. Right, so, if, so if someone's saying, you know, oh, I'm a gay, or they don't, they're not sure or whatever, they will now be able to find out. <laughs> so you can go to the doctor and <laughs> to find out if you're straight or gay. C c is there any gay in my brain? Let's have a look. Do 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 do. You've got a little bit of a gay in you, yes. A little bit of a gay in there. Yes, you've got the uh, you've well, got what, you've what got a little bent cell there. Well, that's that's why they did it anyway. I don't understand how they how they could differentiate which were straight and which were gay to begin with, before they then gave it to the scientist. Wasn't that what the <laughs> scientists figured out? Well, there's, uh, there's, there's, how there's, could they tell? Were there's they one theory that it's it genetically pill? determined. There is one. <laughs> there is there is there is a theory that's genetically determined, but I, I, I don't think it's as easy as um, uh, pulling a sheep's brain apart and finding a little pink, sort of like blob in there, and going right. We've taken the guy out. And now he's going to go and shag some ewes. I don't think it's that straightforward. Although there, uh, uh, the homosexuality does occur at uh, a similar sort of rate in animals, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So you knew that, didn't you? So that's that's that one. I mean, <laughs> I just like the idea of the farmer figuring out which is straight and gay. Well, yeah. that one's wearing quite a camp-looking neckerchief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm yeah. thinking maybe yeah. he's gay. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love the fact that they can. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that, that one's <laughs> that one's <laughs> a big fan of Sophie Ellis Baxter. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah. Yeah. They would. Uh, they put on ABBA and see which ones dance. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. how they. Which one? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, put on like Barbra <laughs> Streisand and see which ones sing along. <laughs> That shit is rubbish. <laughs> what did I find out? Did, did, did you just say that is rubbish? No, I found out other other stuff in the week that didn't make the top three. Wow. Wow. Uh, we haven't even had the- This no. must be mediocre stuff. <laughs> this must be really bad. <laughs> yeah. But or it, it might be dubious. Go on. There's, um, there's a woman in Ireland- Yeah. Mm, who has been with a fella for eleven years. Yeah. Um, she always saying to him, you know, oh, when, when, when are we gonna get married and that? And he's like, oh, we don't need to. Uh, you know, we're happy and that. Do you know, like I am with Suzanne, it's like, there's no point, really. Yeah, Unless you have a kid, I don't think you need to, do you? Right. So, um, 
he was like, we'll do it in time, in time and all that. Anyway, he comes home from work one day, he says, oh, go on then, we'll get married. She was so shocked, her hair fell out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? Wow. So. That's extraordinary. <laughs> and what did he say? Oh, I'm not marrying you, Baldy. Yeah. Yeah. Well. She was so She was so shocked, her, so hair shocked her hair fell out. Yeah. I love the idea of it just going from yeah, to the ground. Yeah, it just fell out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what else? That right, that's rubbish. That that's rubbish. That that's rubbish. That that's rubbish. That's rubbish. Next. You've also got, um... <laughs> it's weird, name? isn't it, Rick, that the stories <laughs> that we made up are <laughs> more plausible <laughs> yeah. than the facts yeah. actually Yeah, I think us. we tried too hard. Mm. I think we tried yeah, too That's what he's willing to believe. He's willing to believe <laughs> that a woman's <laughs> hair fell out when her husband came out so long, let's get married then. Yeah. Oh, you old romantic. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, then, here's a good one. Go on, then. Right, in Dubai, this woman went to Dubai for her holiday. Mm. And, um... <laughs> She was over there, and apparently in the markets, they, Bit sell, of my spider. They, they sell lizards. Oh god! Right, just like for people to buy. Mm. So mm. she buys one, mm. not knowing that you're not really meant to take him out of the country. Sure. Um, puts it in a bag. Yeah. Uh, As you do. What have you? And um, then she gets to the airport when she's going home. She's thinking, I can't really leave it in my bag. Yeah. So she puts it on her head. On her head. Where's it as a hat? <laughs> she wore the lizard as a hat. Yeah. Um, <coughs> people on the plane were just like, yeah, everything's fine, you know, they're doing the cross checks and that. Yeah. Have you got your seatbelt on? Yeah. There's a woman great. there with a lizard hat. Um, everything's going well. She gets uh, off the plane at Manchester airport, um, lizard sticks its tongue out. Yeah. The air hostess says, what are you doing with that? She goes, I've had it. I've had it. Lizard said I just found her in Dubai. <laughs> the, uh, they said, I've had this with me all, all journey, and they said, well, you shouldn't have done, and they took it off her. Yeah, I think that is true, actually. Yeah? Yeah. So what about that? Yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That educated me. <laughs> right, what, any more? Well, what's that taught you? That's taught you, you know, be careful when smuggling <laughs> lizards yeah. back as uh, some kind of hat. Yeah, don't, just say, lizard, keep your tongue in, you <laughs> twat. <laughs> Not <laughs> at the customs <laughs> officer! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, what else have Anyone, anyone didn't quite make it? <laughs> Anything we, to declare. We, oh, <laughs> I've, got, I've got a lizard on my head. <laughs> We've got an old saying, one, if you want that. Go on, then. Are yeah. these ones, sorry, are these ones that d didn't make the list? These are ones that didn't make it, Oh, yeah. right, okay. Cos I always, I always get more in than, than I need to, just in case. Just think if someone's just tuned in now. Mm. Is Anders listening? Is, uh, well, I'll tell you, Dickie Anderson. I've got, a, I've got an email from Richard Anderson, uh, Dickie Anderson. Go on. Uh, the dick machine, which... <laughs> the big dick. <laughs> the big dick, which, yeah. uh, now this is interesting. It's, I mean, I think we're wearing him down. Ricky, I think your show might be improving. Go on. That sense of despair and loneliness I normally feel when listening to your show doesn't seem so bad today. He's desensitised to it. Yeah, exactly. Always giving up. Him down. Always mm. just giving up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you listen to this long enough and your standards will drop. Let's play tune. Let's come back with some more Carl's, uh, yeah, I don't, you... I don't want to use the word facts. <laughs> no, <laughs> see, no, yeah. no, he's, want, uh, he's got more screen testing now. The camera's ready for you. Yeah. Right, so let's get out of this house. We've got uh, we've got one more. Go on, uh, educating Ricky to go on and quick then. And the, I need educating. Right, uh, don't rub it too hard. You'll get a rasher. How was he going out with Darren Brown? You said something in the break. Oh, I have to say, yeah, um, Darren Brown, who uh, we bumped into as well, and he did this incredible trick where he puts forty pounds down on the table. He says, "I can tell you which hand you've got a pound coin in." Uh, let's say five times out of five, you know. So I have a, a pound coin in one hand. I put it behind my back. I bring my hands out, and he can tell me every single time which hand it's in by asking questions, by doing various. Well, he doesn't things. ask. But he just goes, "Now you might have it in that one. You might do the same again." But then you're an intelligent person. You're probably not with it. He goes, "So it's in that one," and he does it every time. Yeah, five. It's it incredible. Time. It's absolutely majestic. Oh, and I, I mentioned this to Carl. Yeah. And well, Carl, you tell me how you think you could outwit Darren Brown. Because well, your dad used to do this trick, you well, told me. My dad used to play this. Yeah. Um, How old were you? Uh, I don't know, probably about ten. So you probably weren't as sharp as you were now then. Uh, uh so he used to play it and, and the way of telling what Andy's got it in, his hand looks bigger. So that's how you've got to do it. <laughs> that's how he did it then! Yeah. That's so how to catch Darren out. So ca no, to catch Darren out. It was a bit different because he did it with golf balls, but <laughs> But to catch it. Darren out, <laughs> Carl told me, Rick- He did it with a spud! To catch Darren out, yeah. the hand which hasn't got the coin in, just make it slightly bigger. <laughs> just make it, just like, extend it slightly so it's slightly larger, and that'll catch Darren out. You'll never be able to well, that's that. how he did it. Or you just put, put a pound in each hand okay. and wind him up. Just go, no, you're wrong. You're, yeah. You are brilliant, Carl. Yeah. Do this one. Do you, do, do you, uh, did your dad used to do the one where he takes your nose off, <laughs> off of your face and puts it between his fingers? Did, did you, you did you keep going to the doctors? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go on. Right. You know how that's done? You know he's not actually taking your nose off? It's his off. thumb. Go it on. It is his thumb. Last on. one. Yeah. 
Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rash out. It's been a mess today, <laughs> ain't it? <laughs> what do you mean it's been a mess? It's been a mess. What has? This. What? The show? Yeah. How has it been any worse? It's just all over the place. There's no sort of- it's not tight. It's not tight like it normally is. <laughs> um, and she'll be going away with this, <coughs> thinking that's what the show would be like. She listens to the show. She knows it's a shambles every week. Go on. Well, uh, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. Yeah. Do you know the saying, ham it up? Ah, <laughs> 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 um, uh, yeah, go on, yeah. yeah. Right, well, do you know what it means? Well, it means to overact. Right. Well, years ago, w with, uh, with actors in musicals and stuff, mm. they'd, um, the actors used to look pretty ill on, on the stage because they didn't have proper makeup and that. Right. Right. So, what they used to do, uh, uh to make themselves look- Rub their face in pigs? Well, they got- they got bacon, mm. rubbed it on the face, mm. and it made the face a bit sticky because of all the, like, you know, the pig fat and bit of lard and stuff like that. Mm. And then they'd go and get some bricks. Bricks? Yeah, mm -hmm. house bricks. Rub them together, make some sort of red dust from the brick, mm. and then put the dust on the face. Mm. And the- the fat and the lard and that would make the dust stick mm. to the face. Mm. And, um, they look well under the lights, and that's that's where the they same. smell great as well. Yeah, well, lovely. Everyone likes the smell of bacon. Mm. No, but so that's that's the old uh, ham it up. That's where like it that. comes from. I'm, you know, if, if it's true, I've, started, I've no reason to think that it's not. So that's your third educating Ricky today. So what have you learned? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely got, sod all. You've got your hamming it up. Yeah. Um, Rams are gay. They, they know which ones are gay now. <laughs> now! <laughs> and, uh, At the, last, the, fella, the fella who can hand read, um, an arse. <laughs> <laughs> if you miss the rest of the show, <laughs> what are you gonna make of that? <laughs> <laughs> if you just tuned in, you are a maniac, Carl. So